It is an honor to be here. I'm only able to join remotely because I'm currently in Durham in the United Kingdom visiting uh, the university and visiting some collaborators on a research visit. So as most of you know, I am Dr. Stabila Kola. People who are very familiar with me call me Tabs. And I'm currently based at the University of Johannesburg as a lecturer where I've been working since 2021. And it's quite immensely uh, overwhelming to realize how far we've come with the National Astrophysics and Space Sciences program. It feels like yesterday that I was a student, an honor student in the class with people like Eliab and Kerry, um, just getting on with my um, final honors year. But time has flown and um, we are now, some of us thankfully, uh, are still in the field and working as professional astronomers, such as me. All right, so this is a, a picture of me uh, that was taken recently at the Meerkat site during a Soreo Open Day where I gave a presentation and uh, this was featured in Nature magazine, which is wonderful because once again, we can put some shine on the Meerkat radio telescope on the global stage. So, oh. my last honors year took place in 2013 and uh, I was an undergraduate student prior to that between 2010 and 2012, where I undertook a BSc honors uh, in physics and astro, just a Bachelor of Science in physics and astronomy, where I was introduced to some wonderful uh, lecturers and senior professors in the field, such as Professor David Ashman, Andy Butler, and Roger Fierick, who guided all of us through a very grueling three-year, uh, you can say, battle where we were taught electrodynamics, solid state physics, quantum mechanics, which was very good preparation for the honors year in 2013, where I then began to focus on the astrophysics side, which I did have a great introduction to from people such as Kurt and, and Rene, who were all very familiar with them, also Patrick. So I spent my undergraduate at UCT and stayed on as a uh, honest student, which was great. Okay, I got to become very familiar with that campus. It's a wonderful, beautiful campus and great people. And along the way, I met wonderful individuals. Um, I already mentioned earlier that he's featured in all three of these photos, in fact. And then other people who unfortunately have left astronomy. Um, Ahmed, I see some others, Rudy Lee, um, and a whole bunch of others. Thank you. Thankfully, Emmanuel is still around. Thank you all over there. Um, but yeah, most of us have moved on, but it was wonderful. I'd say the biggest privilege of taking NAS was being able to meet other young people who are as interested and passionate in uh, just astronomy, but in, in coding and, and data science and, and all that nerdy stuff. It kind of gave me a sense of belonging, So it was wonderful being part of this cohort in 2013. So some of the benefits of NAS, and particularly the honors uh, course that I, uh, try to think through um, and try to understand how it impacted me in a positive way uh, throughout my career is that it was very good preparation. It laid the groundwork for what was to come essentially. So the course material was, was really very relevant to what I'm currently working on. That's galaxy evolution using observational techniques. So we learned very important theory very important observational techniques and, and also Python coding, which is fundamental to practically everything we do in astrophysics. All of this was was brought to us at a stage when we really needed it. So our honors uh, coursework was a very, very fundamental and, and very good preparation, all, all in all. And we also had the opportunity to choose summer projects that allowed us to take trips. So in, in my case, I was part of the group that went to in Hermanus, where we worked on our honors project, essentially, um, throughout the summer. And all of this was covered by the NAS budget, which is wonderful, fabulous, that we got to they would change our setting, completely change our setting, go to this lovely um, beachside uh, uh, scientific uh, institution and work on our project. And we had all our accommodation and food paid for which was a great opportunity. Also having exposure to working professionals in the field. Um, I mentioned a few really great um, astronomers, Renee, Patrick, um, Professor Peter Dunsby as well, 
and also uh, people who tutored us, such as in my case, Zolile and Moses, um, who are still working in the field, some of them, and um, having that early exposure to them and, and being able to interact with them and learn from them was also a very, very powerful and important in, in providing, once again, preparation for a career in astronomy. So um, in, in addition to Sansa, went to Hartrell, again, all the expenses paid and got to get our hands dirty with some, some H1 observations from the other beers with telescope. Great opportunities. So after my honors year in 2013, I transitioned uh, to Germany. So I had applied for the IMPRESS program, which is International Max Planck Research School, PhD program in 2015, uh, when I saw a poster haphazardly hanging on the notice board at the University of the Western Cape, where I was uh, completing my master's project with Professor Matt Jarvis and Dr. Kim McAlpine. And I sent in my application, got all the help I needed, filling out the application, got my references uh, sent as well, and I was shortlisted for interviews, which took place in February 2016. Again, all expenses paid. I got to spend a couple of days in Munich, Germany for the first time in my life, and um, got to speak to working professionals at MPE, ESO, and MPA in Garching, who were offering PhD project to, to students who were shortlisted and, and being interviewed during that workshop. And the result was that I was selected for the IMPRESS 2016 to 2019 cohort of students. And there we are over there standing outside of the steps of the Max Planck extraterrestrial physics entrance build in Garki. And um, again, I was in a group of people that, like me, have a passion for for the sciences, specifically astronomy and astrophysics, and um, a very bright and very inquisitive. And again, I felt a sense of belonging. I'm, I'm surrounded by people who are just as nerdy as me. And that was great. So I began my PhD at ESO in August 2016. And I was observationally studying the extended baryonic kalos of high redshift radio galaxies using observations from the European Southern Observatory, which is where I was funded as a PhD student and where my supervisors were based. Um, I used optical integral field unit spectroscopy to look at ionized gas in baryonic kalos of radio galaxies that are distant and also used AMA to trace the cold molecular gas and um, millimeter sub millimeter continuum emission to understand the molecular gas reservoirs of content of, the, of galaxies and also their star formation. So I've put here some photos of uh, Ludwig Maximilian University, which is where I completed uh, my PhD. This is where I defended it. And this is a lovely picture of the ESO campus, which is just a stunning building. Okay, so my successful defense took place on the 28th of November, 2019. And that's me standing in front of my board, which shows all the information I put down in a duration of 20 minutes where I have to explain my PhD without any slides, just a whiteboard and a marker, no eraser, and uh, it was successful. I was uh, awarded my, my PhD, of course, provisionally. In Germany, you cannot call yourself a doctor until the faculty have handed you your certificate, which only happens about three months after your defense. But the defense itself was successful and my thesis committee were happy with my written and oral presentation. So um, in hindsight, the name of my thesis is really long. So these days I just call it Baryons in the CG on the Pirate of Radio Galaxies. And uh, my supervisors over here, uh, Joël Vernet, a French man who's very skilled in telescope and spectrometer design at ESO, and also Carlos de Brook, a Belgian man who is very knowledgeable um, in radio astronomy and millimeter sub millimeter astronomy. So in my postdoctoral years after defending my, my thesis, just before the pandemic, very lucky, I had an in-person defense and then all hell broke loose. I was a Soreo postdoc at UCT in the year of 2020. And then sometime towards the end of the year, I applied for a lectureship in my hometown of Johannesburg and was successful in being uh, appointed 
when I then began as a lecturer in January 2021 at the University of Johannesburg. And it was a complicated time. We were in full lockdown, as you remember. So I was onboarded into the department completely online. I didn't get a chance to meet anyone in person until many months later. Online teaching, which I was thrust into immediately, was all online. And um, that was complicated, but it was, uh, you could say, a baptism of fire that, that built my character somewhat. I had the experience of uh, supervising an honor student um, in that year and also began teaching undergraduate engineering students and um, began teaching an honors astrophysics module, which is more relevant to what I work on, radiative processes in astrophysics. It was a challenging time and um, learning to balance teaching and research is tricky, as some of you may know. So I am currently the astronomer in who has radio expertise at the University of Johannesburg. It's quite a small department. We're still working on building it. And I currently study galaxy evolution using wide field deep radio continuum surveys and multi-wavelength observation. I collaborate with the New York Cat Mighty Group, um, who are based in the UK and also South Africa, and I recently joined the LOFAR team in the United Kingdom. So I've thankfully been able to undertake some international research visits during my post uh, in the last two years. Last year in November, I was in Germany visiting the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy and um, I gave a talk there speaking about Meerkat, my team, science and uh, our latest results. And this year I've been in the UK now for about six months um, with my collaborators, specifically with my LOFA team and um, been working on a paper. So it's great, I've been able to travel um, as a result of uh, in fact, my postdoctoral work and uh, my scientific collaborations. So again, balancing teaching and research and also trying to get involved in very important uh, say milestones such as the International Astronomical Union General Assembly 2024 meeting, which is happening in Cape Town this year. As a member of AFAS, I'm also linked to the NOC. Um, which is being led by Kevin Govender, and I'm also um, with Dr. Sarah White chairing a scientific symposium called All Inclusive AGM. So that's Symposium 394. If you're interested in AGM and would like to submit a talk or uh, abstract or post the abstract, please do so. So, in addition to chairing symposia, I also have other services and duties that related to equity, diversity, and inclusion. I've given public science talks um, through ASA which um, Daniel Kanama, who's in the audience now, has, has been chairing um, or leading. And I've also given public talks at SAAO and Sereo recently, of course, the Sereo Open Day, which um, I show over here, a um, picture of me giving a presentation and also walking around the Meerkat site with a group of visitors from the general public who are interested in knowing more about the telescope. I tried to answer as many questions as possible to the best of my ability. I also recently given equity diversity talks in Warwick University and Edinburgh University. I have um, a medium page where I write about scientific discoveries, very biased, primarily with the Meerkat radio telescope. Okay, um, so that's a popular science uh, page. Then just practicing my popular science uh, writing, and also I'm part of the astronomy and color uh, group. And um, we, two years ago, we had a flagship uh, speaker series online where we invited very distinguished women um, to, to give talks about their lives and their careers. So we hope to do something similar like this in the coming year. So my hopes for NASP going forward is that we will have more um, African lecturers, um, which will be wonderful in providing representation um, for the primarily African students who are a part of NASP. Uh, and enrolled as students, of course. And I'd like to see a better gender balance within the, the classes and the cohort of students. And I'd like to see a stronger NASP to academia pipeline. And it would be wonderful to also see the expansion of uh, the NASP program to the Houteng Research Triangle. So if we could have a NASP um, node um, at a BITS, University of Pretoria, or the UJ, University of Johannesburg, even just one, that would be great um, for the expansion of this program. And that's all for me. Thank you very much.